I talked with one of the aides, and I've forgotten now what his name is. I think he's Tyler. And I, I told the aide that I was disappointed that we weren't having an opportunity to hear from Senator Hagan as a group and to be able to ask questions and then perhaps to have her go around and say hello to each individual table. And he said, well, we've done this before, and it's always worked. And I said, well, I know how to ice skate, too, but I'm not particularly good at it. And this is not a good way for everyone to hear what the issues are that people wish to discuss. This is an important forum. She's giving us less than an hour. This is 3.30 to 4.30. It's already 4 o'clock. She's been here about 12 minutes and has spent so far 10 minutes at one table. If you multiply the 10 minutes at that table, this table, that table, that table, that table, that table, that table, we need 70 minutes. It's not going to happen. It can't happen. I used to teach math and I understand what goes on here and this is divide and conquer is a shame. How are y'all? I'm fine. Good. I got a question for you. I'm sorry, Rob. Uh, and I am Kay Hagen. Uh, I'm Bill Walters, my wife Andrea. And uh, I'm concerned about the uh, potential bailout of the union contracts and uh, pension plans and bailout to the state. Are you in favor of that? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. The bailout, the potential bailout to union pension plans. You don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. In North Carolina? No. There's a bill coming forward. Bailout for union pension plans. There's talk of it. Would you be in favor of that? I don't, uh, I'd have to, I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. So, I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. No. If there's How about I mean, what I can do, we, we what can I can get do back. Is, yeah. is give you guys the, uh, my contact. Okay. Specific legislative questions, we can get you. The final answer from our legislative staff. Now, I write you? Yes. Or I write her? You can write me. Well, I, I, I know My who to send it to. We'll get back to you. Yes, sir. We'll, okay. we'll work together exactly. to, okay. to answer Next. your question. Okay. Other questions? Go ahead, Charlie. My daughter has two children, single mother, and uh, I'm concerned about the taxes that are coming along. And are you familiar with the Americans for tax reform? Good. Uh, reading them. Where does she live? Hmm? Where does your daughter live? Pinehurst. Okay, here in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the child credit, she has two, goes from 1000 for each child to 500 on January the 1st. Because of the, all the former Bush tax cuts. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things. All the brackets uh, for income tax are all creeping up. None of them down. They're all going up, you know, 5%. 15, the 15 bracket goes to 20. Does she make more than $250,000 a year? No. Well, from what I understand, whatever we put forward, we would not increase anybody who makes less than $250,000. The, uh, and it's a single person, maybe it's too much. There's a possibility, although Congress is talking about it, that uh, dividends will be taxed at 39.6%. Well, there's a, you know, there's... Right now, unless we act, the Bush tax cuts would go off, and a lot of, I think, detrimental things would come forward that I certainly would not want to see. And that would be a state tax going to a million dollars, the, uh, the capital gains tax, the, the, the uh, and I can't remember what each one is without looking at a sheet, but I am hoping that we will come together, that at this point in time, I am looking very uh, strongly that not doing anything to affect people that make $250,000 or less, that we would not increase their taxes at all, but the people, doing away with those. Um, you mean doing away with the tax break?
breaks for those people. And so does that mean that you would like to see the Bush tax cuts continued for all the rest? From what I understand, and I wish I had, I mean, we need to look at a, at a sheet, but right now I'm looking at if it's $250,000 or less, then I would want to keep those tax cuts in place. And then do away with the other ones. And, and once again, specific nuances, I would have to specifically go. And I know this is being recorded. That's why I want to say that I'd have to specifically go and look at each individual item. And that's, that's my sort of the overarching guideline that I'm looking at. Can you, can you say something, Senator Hagan, about uh, people with health insurance? Are, is it going to be, uh, is it your understanding as it is the understanding, I think, of most Americans that there's going to be a requirement that everyone in America have health insurance, that they all buy health insurance. And do you understand the precedent that that sets that is not in the Constitution? Actually, I think it is would fall under the Constitution that you would find it would be something that would be constitutional. If to require at, health if insurance? You, if you look at the fact that we can do things that would benefit the general welfare and that we could do things to help regulate from an interstate commerce. Do you understand how concerned Americans are that they are being now required soon to buy health insurance and right behind that people are saying it's really for your own good to eat healthier food so we're going to require that also and we're going to tell you what other kinds of things you can do for example well, I, I, I don't, I, I don't you're going to have to spend a lot of money upgrading your house if you're oh, going no, to sell no, no, it no, no, that's no, no, already no, no, no. in the that's books right. it's in the books no well my feeling is that um, let's look at the um, requirement for health insurance why right now each and every one of you here is paying eleven hundred bucks on your taxes for people who go to the emergency room. What we need to be doing is focusing on prevention. And if people can get treated early, we're all going to save money. Because right now, why should you be taxed another $1,100 for people who are going to the emergency room if they could have been treated much, 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 much cheaper? We all know going to the emergency room is probably the most expensive way to deliver care. And yet it's certainly not beneficial. So I think the idea is... How can you add 30 million people and have it be less expensive? Because there's 30 million people are going into the emergency rooms right now. Not, no, no, not all of them are. Not all of them are. Something like 17% are going into the emergency rooms. And to add 30 million people to a role, well, this is something that's sense. going to go. Well, if you look at the, the insurance plans in 2006, people in North Carolina were paying about $6,000 for a family of four coverage. Today, that's $12,000. In 2006, 16, it's being looked at. It would be about $24,000. I don't know about you at this table, but there's nobody I know that can afford that kind of increase in health insurance premiums. We can't afford it. We cannot afford to go on the route that, that our country is going right now. That's why this week right now is Community Health Center Week. And we're trying to build community health centers across North Carolina. I think we have maybe about 123 of them. Anybody at this table can go to one of those in North Carolina. Half the people that go there have health insurance, half of them don't. The idea is, as you can get preventive treatment, you can see a doctor, and it is such a cheaper way to deliver care. The people presenting with late stage cancer who never got treated before, or just going into the emergency room. We need to, I think, look at the way that we treat people in our country. And so, the way the CBO scored this bill, and the CBO is Congressional Budget Office, which is a nonpartisan entity, Democrats and Republicans use it all the time. It said that the first 10 years, about 100, I think it was about 123 billion would be saved, and about uh, over 20 years, about 1.2 trillion. Now we all know a lot of things are going to happen in 10 years, and 20 years, and this is something that we will, I'm sure, as time goes on, tweak it to hopefully make it better. And I'm, 
are always amenable to that. I think we all need to have a much better feeling as to what we pay for treatment. My son had uh, surgery the other day, and it's like, how much is this going to cost? Nobody seems to know about it. Another friend of mine is a neurologist. He had a hip replacement. He called three hospitals to find out where it would be the cheapest. And he, as a physician, he couldn't figure that out. That's the kind of information I want to get to so that you know what it is you're buying and how much this is going to cost. As a senator, are you going to have the exact same plan that I'm going to have? Exactly. Exactly. No more, nope. no less. Nope. It's the same plan. Same We'll all go on the internet and there'll be a, if people want to, there'll be a uh, uh, information that will show you what is available and whatever plan that the U.S. Senate has is a plan that anybody in the public can have access to. If I have a heart problem and you have a heart problem, you will wait the same amount of time in the hospital that I'll wait? It's exactly the same plan. Exactly the same way. Are there